everyone, it's Jean from the Inky Owl Studio. Welcome, welcome to those who are new and those who have been following for a while. I am going to do another easy project today. It's a very much a beginner's project. Anybody uh, can do this and it's quick and, e and for those of us who've been uh, creating journals, it's a really fast one. <laughs> and it is a no sew uh, spine uh, journal and it's, it's very simple to do. Uh, I did get the idea for this journal from um, the gal over at Ruby and Pearl, and I will link down below the video, the inspiration video. And I also uh, was inspired by um, how Creative Susie at Creative Cafe Girl interpreted this as well. So I'm going to be using uh, a, ephem uh, a digital kit from Ephemeris Garden. And it is called Cottage Gate. And I'll put links down below to where this is at. I just love it. It is very summery looking to me. And very shabby chic looking. And so I'm going to, let me just share, you know, a few of these pages with you. I like the this uh, muted teal and these reds and pinks some of the ephemera that comes with the kit very cute so I am excited to use these of course it has birds and that's always kind of cool so these this is the little journal or the digital kit that I'm going to be working from now what I'm going to be using to do this uh, are two envelopes and these are craft envelopes and they're very heavy uh, for, as far as envelopes go, they're, they're quite heavy. Uh, craft paper is like that. And so I, I prefer working with these. Now, if you only have the paper envelopes, I would suggest taking a piece of cardstock and cutting it in and just slipping it into uh, the sides just to make it a little bit, you know, stiffer for yourself. These are large. These are six by nine. And by no means does it have to be six by nine you can use um you know whatever size envelope you have you can also use the same concept on one of these envelopes only of course larger i don't have the, the larger ones but you can use the same concept on these <clears throat> in which you will be uh, folding them over for a cover like so um and the video down below used an old um uh, a uh, composition notebook uh, cover so you can see how she used hers in that now I'm going to be doing the spine slightly different but still the same concept <clears throat> and then um, you will need some kind of a ribbon now the ribbon needs to be kind of slippery so this is like seam binding this is like sari silk and this is just um, a satin ribbon. Uh, the gross grain wouldn't work. It's too uh, heavy, but this is, let me think, this is like three eighths of an inch wide, probably up to about a half inch. Um, satin ribbon would work. You also can get ribbon that's like uh, clear, uh, not clear, but um, very thin. Um, so anything that's slippery is, is what will work in this. You will also need a way to punch a hole. Now, I you need like an awl. Um, I don't have my punch with me. I should have grabbed it. But anything that will punch a hole, I think I also have um, something like, you know, just, just something that's sharp and you can put a hole in is basically what you're looking for, you know. We used to call them ice picks back in the day. But, um, yeah, something that's just sharp that will make a hole. And let's see, I think that in your glue um, is basically all you'll be needing to work in this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cover out of these two envelopes. And what I like to do is I like to glue this flap onto here and then turn it around and glue this flap over here uh, but before I even do that I just remembered what I also want to do is I want to reinforce this seam right in here 
and uh, there's different ways you can do that. Uh, masking tape is probably the easiest way. Most people have masking tape. You just want to put a strip down there. If you have bandage tape, that would work too. Uh, um, like a sports tape, bandage tape type of thing. Uh, let's see. You could use uh, a washi tape, <clears throat> but I would glue it down. I'd probably use maybe a couple layers of that. I would use one here and then one over here of washi tape and glue both of them down. Uh, let me see what else could we use. Well, and if all else fails, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is cracking up. Uh, if all else fails, you can just get um, a piece of cardstock, a lightweight cardstock, a little strip, and just glue a strip down there. So some way, just because the fold in this envelope here is pretty worn and uh, has thinned out, thinned out the paper just a little bit. So I'm going to grab my uh, masking tape. Now this is sort of a Goldilocks dilemma because you don't want this to be so thick you can't comfortably put a hole in it. <laughs> so, um, you know, you don't want it so glued up and heavy that you you have a hard time, you know. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a hole and then putting our ribbon through that hole. So uh, masking tape is just about right. And like I say, washi tape would be good. As long as you glued it down. So I just want to give that a little extra reinforcement is all. And there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to glue right here along the edge of the flap and I'm going to line up that center with the center of the one on the bottom okay. just so they meet nicely and then I'm going to seal up the envelope with the other envelopes flat. That's really what I'm doing. Okay. And craft paper sometimes takes a little while for it to get to hold. And then once you've done that one, before, and there we go. We're just going to get right in here. Okay, so now we have, essentially we have our cover for our journal. I'm going to score on each side. About, um, I would, now this is only going to have one signature. Okay, it's going to be a one signature um, journal. So I'm going to score out about a half inch. It would be easier if I did it this way. About a half inch, or no, no, I want it to be a total of a half inch. So I want to score a quarter of an inch out past that middle seam. So I'm going to score a quarter of an inch on one side and quarter of an inch on the other side. So that in total I have a half inch. Now this isn't going to exactly make a spine spine like a flat spine because this fold in the middle um I had a hard time seeing this because this fold in the middle is pretty pretty deep i don't think we're going to get rid of that fold but what we're trying to do is just make it a little rounder perhaps all right just kind of encourage some kind of a of a spine just to give room to our journal so that when we add things there'll just be a little bit more room for them to breathe so that's what I'm going to do I'm doing here I'm just sort of putting this down a little bit making sure it's even there and scoring it or Furnishing it down. There we go. All right. 
and now you can see you've got at least something that you know it looks like a spine and um, yeah, it's actually it's better than I thought it was gonna look um, there we go it looks like a spine there but essentially you just kind of want to give room to the paper so that they they can expand a little bit so that is essentially our cover um, I wouldn't worry about this hump because that's going to go away when we start working with the spine. I did ink around the uh, whole cover and such. I did want to point out a couple of things. Um, first of all, when you get your cover done, one side's going to be uh, smooth and the other side's going to have this little pattern on it. Now, you might want to choose the smoother side without the flaps on it for your front and um, choose the other one for your back so that you know your your eyes don't really immediately see the flap areas that come out but again your paper may be a lot closer to uh, the edge than my paper is but anyways I am choosing that as my front side uh, this is actually this is a no sew spine but I am going to be doing some stitching that is purely decorative do not have to do this I'm going to stitch around um, this before I glue it down and when I go to glue it down I'm only going to glue three sides and I'm going to make a pocket in here now um, for the closure you do have a uh, well, you have more than probably two options, but two options that I am thinking of. The first one is that I'm going to be putting in an eyelet here. And uh, actually an eyelet in both of these uh, so, uh, cover and the back and put ribbon through it uh, for a tie. But if you don't have an eyelet, you don't want to work with eyelets, you haven't done them before and you just don't, you know, they're just nothing that you have the equipment to do then this is then you're going to be gluing when you glue your cover down you're going to want to glue some ribbon underneath that cover piece like so so um, you really won't be able to make a pocket out of it like I'm going to be making one and you'll want to do the same you know for the back side as well so that you can uh, eventually tie these together so that's something you'll want to consider before you glue down your top um, let's see uh, like the paper you put on the inside you can make this into a pocket even if you glue um, <clears throat> the trim on the outside like so even though you have glued that trim, you can glue this down three ways and make a pocket in here. So those are just some options for you to play with. Um, I printed this out on cardstock, I think, or if you have like a heavyweight two-sided scrapbook paper, that would be great. Um, sort of a heavyweight paper that can, you know, stand up to... Uh, it being a pocket, I, I wouldn't use, you know, thin paper to make the pockets with. Um, see, I don't know what else, uh, anything else I can say. I think that's it. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish the cover up off camera and I'll be right back. All right. The um, cover has been completed. I have sewn around it just as for decoration. And I went ahead and glued the three sides to make a pocket. I put in the eyelets where I'm going to thread the ribbon through. But of course I wouldn't have had to do that if I had decided to glue the ribbon underneath the cover, like I'd explained before. And I put uh, paper on the inside and inked around it. And this is ready to go. Now we're going to get the pages and put them in. Now I have gathered together um, 10 pages and it's a variety of digital prints and some tea stain paper. Uh, and it can be any kind of paper at all. It can be different sizes, different, um, you know, different weights, whatever. I would, however, not use real thin paper. Um, so, like, regular copy paper is fine. Um, I don't know if I'd use something that was, you know, 
like a magazine paper might be kind of thin uh, for this uh, project. Uh, but anyways, especially especially the uh, first page and the second page probably needs to be a good weight of paper. And you'll see why in a minute. So I have folded them in half. And now I'm going to line them up in the middle of the cover. So remember we made these two little score lines and then there's the natural fold that's there in the middle. And so I try to line up this little middle uh, the original fold line with the middle of the fold line of my papers and you know just get it in that general vicinity and check to see that well let's see here maybe my thing i think my papers got off skewed there a little bit um there we go put it back in there and just uh, make sure that you know it's lays in there pretty even you know kind of even around here and even down here and then uh, take some clips, and I'm using these large paper clips, but you can use close pins, um, anything that you can clip on and reach down on your paper. And uh, we're going to put four holes down here. I'm first going to measure where my holes are going to be. And the first hole I'm putting down about three quarters of an inch from the top of my paper. So that's where I'm going to put my first hole. I'm going to mark it there and three quarters of an inch up on from this from the bottom up on the paper. Then I'm going to measure about, you know, this kind of does depend on how long your uh, journal is anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches is where I'm going to put the next hole all right so this is a pretty um, long journal I think it uh, I said it was nine inches but you know maybe on a shorter journal this would only be like an inch and a half maybe inch and three quarters I guess in the end, what I'm trying to do is uh, I have a, the, the ties are going to be here and here. So I, you know, I'm trying to iron up so that there are some left in the middle, but not a whole lot. Okay. It, it'll probably be easier to see once I, I get the ties in, right? Now I'm going to take your awl and you're going to poke a hole right through right straight down through to the through the cover and you want you know a fairly good sized hole so I'm going to go all the way down my all to the end and we're just going to do that to all four places that we've marked and so um, you might want to check and see how we're doing here yeah as long as we're getting pretty close to <clears throat> might have to switch this up just a little bit trying to get my holes aligned with the middle as much as I can it it's okay to be a little, a little off. I'm just being a perfectionist here and there's really no need for it. All right. So watch your fingers on the other side <laughs> with your pokey tool. Now I'm going to take my ribbon and I think I've got here, let's see, I've got about, oh, I don't know. I cut off 30 inches. I know I'm not going to use that much, but it's probably, better to have more than not enough I think now I'm going to use the end of my stylus here to poke my ribbon through um, you however might not have a stylus so you can use like a pencil you can use um, you can even use like the tip of your scissors you could use the owl, owl but it would be a little more difficult because it would keep poking through but you just need to 
keep getting this through that hole. Yeah. There. Just when you think you're not going to do it. And we're going to do the same with this side. And I see there's a knot in here I have to cut off. We'll do the same over here. And maybe this time. Oh, you know what? I'm going to try a trick. You know, I'm going to try this trick. It just came to me. I am going to just, you know, make this as small as I can make it. And I'm just going to put a couple of twists of tape on it. Just a couple. Okay, I can just cut it off. Just a couple of twists on it. Now I'm going to see how that might work. It might not, but then again it might. But that's not, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. I think that is easier. Yes. I think that was just a little easier. <laughs> Just a little. All right. And what we'll do here is we're just going to take it and we're going to tie it. Now you can tie it with a knot uh, if you want to. Tie it in a bow. You can also tie this to the inside if you would prefer. But I kind of like it being on the outside. It's part of the look that I'm going for. So I'm liking that. And now I'm going to put down um, it on the second one. And I will do that off camera and be right back. Alrighty, the ties are in. So cute. I, do, I really do like the look of this. Now what's really nice about this method is that you can untie them. Take them out, take the paper out, and put new paper in. So you can use your cover over and over again if you want to. Um, that's kind of the nice part about this. Uh, but as you see, everything is just nicely snug and put in there just where it belongs. Now, there might be, you know, you're going to get some tearing, um, you know, where the ribbon is going through. But that is part of the look. That's part of the shabby chic look. But it doesn't mean that uh, it's going to fall apart for sure. It's, it's still very, very secured in the, there. Now, I believe Ruby, yeah, I'm pretty sure Ruby and Pearl, what they did was, um, or she did, she put in just one tie all the way down, and then you tie one tie in the back. And that would work too. Um, I just felt that this just made it, a tad bit more secure especially if somebody else is going to be using it beside myself I you know if it was just myself I might have I probably would have gone with that way but um I kind of just like it to be a little bit more um secured down here and you know I like that I think it's really cute and I'm going to be adding uh, more decorations to this you know lace and shabby chic stuff and so in the end uh, this will actually you know be part of that look so there you go. This is a no sew um, spine, no sew signatures in journal. Very cute. And um, yeah, I hope you'll give this uh, idea a try. It's, it goes you know fast and quick and no stress, right? <laughs> so the next time we get together, um, I most likely will be um, showing some things that I'm doing inside here as I put elements and decorate it up and such as that. So you have a great and crafty day and I'll see you later. Bye.